Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. This is Linda Kerrigan Everts. I'm the EAP Wellness Coordinator, and it's a pleasure to have you join us today. We did ask a question where everyone is from, and I just wanted to point out some things in the world of New York State acronyms. We found DOT, we have tax and finance, ITS, public service. People are coming from all over the state, which is awesome. We have people from Albany, Avon, New York City, Buffalo State, Wasaic, um, more people from Queens and Rotterdam and Albany, Manhattan Psych Center. Thanks for joining us. We have people from Syracuse and Long Island, Buff State. So it is a pleasure to have you join us today. We have a large group. And I just wanted to share with you the wellness content. Um, actually, today's presentation is going to be on uh, hiking. And we have a special guest today. Her name is Val Ryan, and Val works for the Department of Motor Vehicle. She's also a wellness ambassador, and she is on the screen right now. Hi, Val. How you doing? I can't hear you. Why don't we unmute you? There we are. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, it is a pleasure to have you on board and I am going to turn it right over to you. Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Valerie, as Linda noted, and I am uh, the wellness ambassador for New York State DMV. Um, my daily role is I am a senior administrative analyst for change management. Um, but I've been doing the wellness ambassador thing for a few years now. So I am going to take myself off video while I do the presentation so you guys can see all the great material I put together and get started. All right, um, a picture here is my dog, Chloe. This is actually a picture that uh, a great hike that we went on together out in Rensselaer Falls. Um, as I noted, I am the wellness ambassador for New York uh, State Department of Motor Vehicles. I'm going to be presenting today on the Wellness Every Day July initiative, which is go outside and enjoy nature in New York State. For today's webinar, I'll be speaking about hiking in New York, exploring the great outdoors. I really enjoy getting out hiking and just enjoying the sights and sounds of New York State. I've been hiking most of my life, but I've been more diligent about expanding my adventures and recording the newer hikes that I've been taking for the past eight years or so. I actually compile a list of the various hikes that I do because I do like to complete challenges um, both for myself, but also for that just little extra piece that gives me something to work towards. Uh, this not only helps me recollect some of the adventures, but like I said, track those challenges. Today, we're going to cover some ideas for you guys to get out and explore what our great state has to offer, um, including in some of your communities. At the end, I have some, white, uh, some websites that I'm going to share with you, as well as my contact information, should you want to reach out with any questions. Linda, I am not able to change the slide. Okay, hold on. Let me pass you the ball, I think. Hold on. All okay, right. It changed. Try that now. Perfect. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yep. Hiking is an activity that can be enjoyed by individuals of all levels of experience, whether you're a beginning, beginner looking for a leisurely stroll or a seasoned hiker looking for a challenge. There are countless trails and destinations to suit your ability. Uh, this picture here is from Father's Day with my family up at North South Lake Campground in Haines Falls. It is in the Catskill Forest Preserve. As you can see, it's a well-maintained trail. You don't really need structured footwear, but you can just kind of get out with your family. It's, hiking is a great way to get out and enjoy your surroundings. As I noted, um, you can take in the beautiful scenery and appreciate the beauty of the outdoors. Hiking offers a wide range of opportunities for outdoor adventure and exploration. Getting out in your own communities is a great way to get started and exploring some of the many opportunities to connect and explore the beauty of our local surroundings. This is perfect for families with young children, seniors, or anyone who wants to enjoy some fresh air and exercise without too much travel or exertion. Some ideas may involve walking along a path in a park where you can observe wildlife, trees and flowers, or walking along the beach or near a body of water. 
Throughout the year, many of our communities even offer some great outdoor exploration activities. One example is going on right now. It is the Fantastical Creatures Summer Hike-a-Thon Scavenger Hunt on the Hildeberg Hudson Rail Trail for you in the capital region. This can be done as an individual or a group. And the great thing about the New York State Rail Trail is that it's paid, making it ADA compliant. So literally anybody can get out on it. If you have a walker, a wheelchair, or any other assisted devices, as well as, you know, the little kids. Get out, see some things, have a good time. I would suggest that you go on their website as you do need to pre-register if you wanted to participate in this program. Uh, you would check them out at mohawkhudson.org. There you'll find additional information about this program, be entered to win prizes, and even have the opportunity for some ice cream from store shops. In addition to this program that they are offering right now, which is July 1st to July 31st, they also have a wide variety of different trails that the MHLC participates with. So you guys can kind of get started with this adventure with the, with the creatures or with the scavenger hunt and then expand onto other local things in your community. New York also has many historical outdoor explorations throughout the state. The Widow Jane Mine, which is pictured here on the left, is at the Snyder Estate in the Catskills. It's in Rosendale, New York. It was previously a cement mine through 1970, and it was also since used as a mushroom farm, a trout nursery, a supplier of whiskey water, a performance venue, and a recording studio. It is great for exploring and the history that it has there. Currently, the property is available um, to go out and take those walks, hike, bike, and they also host various events, such as live performances, art exhibits, and drum circles within the mine. They also have a small museum on their site. This is another place where you would want to check out their website first. They, are, they do have seasonal hours, and they do have a smaller parking lot. So just being aware of what you're getting into before you take that drive out there is definitely important. Another destination worth, worth checking out is the Great Camp Santanoni in the Adirondacks, which is pictured here on the right. This hike boasts with great history throughout the trail as Camp Santanoni is a national historic landmark. There is a maintained carriage road that leads to various landmarks throughout the path. And this is another one that offers an ADA accessible option with a horse-drawn wagon ride. The wagon ride is available for anybody that's interested, including those with mobility issues, to escape into the woods. This hike is about 10 miles round trip, so that horse and carriage option is, is nice. However, there is a fee for the wagon ride, and it must be booked in advance at the, by the Newcomb Farm. This is a self-led as well as planned tour option up at Camp Santanoni. So here's another one where you'd want to check out that website and get information. They have a rich history there. It is one of the original great camps throughout uh, the state, and it is available for us to go and be a part of. Great. The Great Camp Santanoni also has the option for free camping. It is on a first-come, first-served basis. It's along the trail. You would just watch for designated camp here discs. They're yellow. And be sure to check out their website, greatcampsantanoni.com, for more information. The only thing is that before I, or since I've put this together, the Great Camp Santanoni area is under a state of emergency due to their recent flooding. So again, just very important to always check out where you're going ahead of your trip to be aware of these things. Another fun way to get out, be active, and enjoy nature is by visiting some of New York's great outdoor art exhibits. Our state has a mix of art and nature, including Olana, which is pictured here on the left. Um, Olana is Frederick Church's escape estate atop a hill in the Hudson Valley. It's right over the Rip Van Winkle Bridge. Um, they have an abundant grounds for exploring, great views of the Catskills, and an option to explore the house itself for those of you who may want to go inside. The indoor space does have a fee, but the outdoor grounds do not. The property is leashed pet friendly with their great trails and views, as you can see here on the left. My dog is hanging out in the field with me. Um, if you would like to check out the historic building and actually go inside, I would suggest checking with your local library, as at least for my area, any members of the Upper Hudson Library System offers free passes to various museums, and Olana is one 
that is offered. Another option in the Hudson Valley, pictured here on the right, uh, which is free of charge and leashed pet friendly is our OMI in Ghent. It's in Columbia County. They have various labeled sculptures throughout their 120 acre nature park. Everything is outside and there's even a small cafe within their building. They also host various events throughout the year. So be sure to check out their website, ROMI at ROMI.org. New York State has many other outdoor art opportunities as well, such as Bridge Gardens in Bridgehampton, Long Island area, or Opus 40 in the Catskills, and more. Be sure to check out the resource links at the end of the presentation for more ideas. Maybe a day hike is more your speed. Are you looking for something more challenging? Day, day hikes are a great way to go with some planning ahead. You may be able to do multiple hikes in a day or even work to complete some of the various challenges the area has to offer. Picture here is the John Burroughs Slabside Nature Sanctuary in New Paltz. Not only does the area provide the hiker with nature and trails, but also history and options for non-motorized watercraft as well. There are some buildings to explore and also an area to picnic. Um, when I went out there the last time where this picture was taken, we came upon some kayakers and we actually found that there was a backside to the sanctuary where you could kayak in and access the trail system that way. So you're not limited just to that parking lot, parking and getting out there, you know, to just hike. Maybe a challenge is more suiting to your interest. Um, like I said, I have been hiking for a long time, but I find finding the different challenges that not only in my area, but other areas I may not go to is a draw for me. So the most recent challenge I completed was the Catskill Fire Tower Challenge. Um, this would be considered a day hike, which is a great way to go with some planning ahead. Like I said, you might be able to do a couple. So for example, with the Upper Esopus and Mount Tremper, that is actually at the Catskill Visitor Center and it is right at ground level. That is a great place to start for anybody because you get the idea of what the fire tower is with very little effort. And being at the Catskill Fire Tower, or at the Catskill Visitor Center, there's a lot of great resources right in that building, including area maps. Um, like I noted, I had done this one before. So what I did here was, as I'm doing it again with I had originally done it with my dog, Chloe. I'm doing it again with my best friend, Amber. And what I did was I kind of mapped out what I felt was the level of difficulty. So again, with upper SOPIS being at ground level, very little effort. This one actually would be ADA compliant as it is on a paved path with a paved parking lot. The rest of them would not be. They all definitely have a level of difficulty within them. So for me, not only are the challenges exciting, but they give me the goal to reach. With this particular challenge, I was able to earn a, a patch, a certificate, and a year subscription to the New York State Conservationist Magazine. The DEC is actually offering that again this year, as well as some various chances to win some prizes. These and many of the other challenges consider a different interest and offer, most offer various incentives. In addition to this Catskill Fire Tower Challenge, there's also an Adirondack Fire Tower Challenge, which does incorporate five out of six of these in the Catskills uh, for completion. And on top of those, some of the other ones would be the Adirondack Nine, which includes your furry friends on your hiking journey, the Adirondack Six Pack Challenge for those who want to end their hikes with a New York craft beverage, Tupper Lake has a triad option, so it would be three hikes. You can do them at your leisure or for an additional challenge, get them all done within one day. With any challenge or any hike, just be sure to check out the requirements before beginning as some do require you to pre-register pre or may have specific info for the program completion parameters. For example, during COVID, there was a toilet paper hiking challenge. It was a solo challenge. Um, that was the whole social distancing thing, and you took your picture with a roll of toilet paper and you submitted it, and that was the challenge. So some people like the challenge like me, some people just want to go out and do it. Whatever is your passion, just go for it. Getting outside and taking these adventures is really what it's all about.
For those more advanced or looking to challenge themselves further, maybe peak bagging is for you. Peak bagging is a popular outdoor activity that includes climbing to the summit of a mountain or other high point. It is often seen as challenging and rewarding with many peak baggers striving to reach the top of as many peaks as possible. This would be one of those examples of challenging yourself versus one of those set challenges. The goal of peak bagging is not just to reach the summit, but to enjoy the journey and the beautiful landscape along the way, as not all summits have a view. Pictured here is myself at Devil's Path in the Catskills. This hike is noted as one of the most difficult hikes in the Catskills and also on the East Coast. Though it is dog friendly, um, I brought Chloe with me and found various areas where she needs to be lifted or carried. There are limited water sources, so being prepared is important especially when bringing your furry friends or any children. Peak bagging is usually the more strenuous of hikes, so be sure to map out your plan. You are not guaranteed to have any electronic reception, so having a map and a plan is just as important as being prepared with your clothing, safety, and nutritional needs. Being prepared. So I pictured some of the gear that you might expect to see, some things you might be a little less familiar with, but whether you choose a local adventure, a leisurely hike, or a challenge, you should always be prepared. Pictured are some basic items for this outing, or various outings. I keep a hiking bag packed in my car so that I'm always prepared for an adventure. For everyone in the group, if you're just getting started out, there's some essentials to have on hand when heading out. One would be navigation a map, a compass, altimeter, GPS device, or a personal locator beacon. Of course, this would be dependent, you know, if you're going to the park, maybe just your compass and your phone is fine, but if you're doing the thing like peak bagging, you really want to be prepared. You don't know if you're gonna have that self-service. You don't know if your phone's going to die. So knowing your route is going to be important. Not all trails are well mapped. Sun protection, sunglasses, sun protective clothing, and sunscreen is important. First aid, including foot care and insect repellent as needed. Extra food and water beyond what you expect to use. A water filtration system, such as a filtered straw or a water bottle, is ideal for times that there is not a water source and you need healthy water unexpectedly along the trail. Um, I found myself in a situation one time when I somebody had mentioned on here the salt and chain trifecta. I had completed that and underestimated how hot it was that day and the amount of resources that I had for myself and Chloe. So whether good or bad, I gave my resources to her because I knew I, I was responsible for getting us both out. And if something happened to her, it was gonna be especially impactful for me to have to carry her at 75 pounds. So again, that water filtration straw or water bottle is very important. It gives you the ability to have fresh water no matter where you are as long as there is a, you know, a puddle even. Um, extra clothes are important, something light if you go out when it's chilly and something warm for you to take off when it gets nice out. The exact items from each system that you take can be tailored to the trip you're taking. Um, again, based on this picture. If the location is new to you, do your research. Tools and apps such as the New York State DEC site or the All Trail site or app will assist in knowing what you're up for as far as the terrain length and more. For the longer, more strenuous or overnight adventures, be sure to pack sufficiently for your needs. Always be prepared and when in doubt, plan ahead. If there is a sign-in kiosk, like pictured here on the right, be sure to sign in upon entry and sign out upon leaving. This is not only for the recording of visitor information, but also to enable search and rescue team to locate you if you are lost. Um, on these sign-in maps, it will ask you what is your destination or what is your purpose. And that is where you would put that you're camping or that you're going for a fire tower Etc. You know, a lot of these places do have various trail systems off of just the one main trail. As we just reviewed, planning and preparing is important. This also means um, being aware of weather conditions and parking conditions. Uh, most of you will be visiting established areas with pre existing trails and paths and campsites, so be sure to stay along the path. Camping is allowed on many hikes. Just be sure to know the rules of the area you are visiting. It's often 200 feet from the road, trail, stream, or pond for camping and fires. No camping above 3,500 feet. Lean-tos are to be shared. So if you think that is first come, first serve, and another group comes upon you and needs that shelter, you are supposed to share. 
uh, no tents and lean-tos. And some areas do have additional special rules. So again, just being aware of what those are, especially in the Adirondacks and the Catskills. Disposing of waste properly, whether carry in and carry out or using designated trash receptacles. You should be packing out all rubbish, including food scraps and toilet paper. Leave what you find means not taking anything with you that doesn't belong, such as no animals, no rocks, no flowers, no cutting or damaging any branches or plant life. Um, most people here are probably beginners or newer to it, so we're not talking about bushwhacking trails here. One motto, and somebody mentioned it over here, is take only pictures and leave only footprints. Minimizing fire and camp impacts such as using a backpacking stove or a designated campfire area. With any fire, you should keep your eyes on the fire, keep away from the vegetation, choose a fire that is already dis uh, disturbed or gather wood using only dead wood and downed trees. It is also important to put out any fire completely before you leave. Always respect wildlife, do not approach or touch animals, do not feed them or leave them food, and do not leave your food out. If you're with your furry friend, do not let them engage with the wildlife either. Be considerate. Don't camp or travel too close to others. Be polite, respect hiking etiquette, and allow people to pass when you should. Keep your pets under control. This also means leashed. And do not disturb structures or wildlife or flock trails. Hiking partners can be important. Um, on the left here, again, I have Chloe. And on the right, I have some of my nieces and my nephews. This is up behind my house, which is why I did not disclose the location of the one on the right. Um, with hiking partners, it is great and ideal, but not required. It's a precaution in case there's ever an injury or an emergency. And it's also a great motivator to have somebody by your side to enjoy the adventures with. Um, my nieces and nephews love getting out, love the adventures, and that makes me enjoy it even more. So my question to you all is going to be, are you ready to get out for your next adventure in New York? As I mentioned at the beginning of this, I keep a bag, but maybe to get started, one of the wellness daily to do topics was pack a pair of walking shoes today before you leave for work. On the way home, stop at a local park or in your neighborhood and go for a walk and unwind after a long day. What better way to start than to do it, like I said, right in your own community? Here are some of the resources that I touched on throughout the presentation today. One was the Fantastical Creatures Mohawk Hudson Land Conservancy and the Hildeberg Hudson Rail Trail info. You can find that at mohawkhudson.org. Just put the Fantastical Creatures in the search bar and that will be the easiest way to find it along with the supplemental information. Uh, the Department of Environmental Conservation has great information on seasonal outdoor info, hiking, bird watching, and more. They are a great resource on just a ton of stuff, including the trailhead information and some of the coordinates that you might not otherwise find. The All Trails app or their webpage for more information, pictures, and resources at alltrails.com. New York State Parks and Historic Sites at parks.newyork.gov. And you can also do a browser search for many of the fun challenges New York has to offer or anything else to do with the art or historic outings that are available to us throughout the state. This is my other dog, Stella, and this is on the rail trail. I just want to thank everybody for attending the wellness webinar with me today. If you have any questions, my contact info is below. Again, my name is Valerie Ryan. I can be reached at valerie.ryan at dmv.ny.gov. And as I mentioned earlier, I am the wellness ambassador for New York State DMV, as well as the senior administrative analyst in New York the DMV Change Management Office. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Val. That was awesome. So much fun, so much to learn. As you see in the comments, everyone is thanking you. That was a great presentation. And uh, I know I've learned a lot and am inspired. So uh, if you have questions, please reach out to Val uh, personally. I know she there were some questions in the comment section. If you haven't had a chance, to scroll through the comments. There were some great um, ideas from uh, just people that were per the people that attended today. So if you wanna give Val a thumbs up or a clap, we, she definitely appreciates it. It's been a, a pleasure to have everyone here today. So thank you. Look at those claps, Val. <laughs> Val.
That's awesome. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. I was nervous. Oh, I, I forgot it was in camera. <laughs> I touched my camera. face. See, that's real. <laughs> that's good. But thank you. I appreciate everybody coming today and listening to me. And I really do hope that everybody gets out and finds some kind of adventure. Like I said, whether it's in your community, whether you want to travel a little bit. At this point, I'm going all over the place. So I'm also open to you know any suggestions that anybody has for me to check out what your favorite places are. Just drop me a line. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Next month is uh, we're going to be talking about fruits and vegetables. So the end of the summer and the gardens are abundant and the farmers markets will be blossoming. So join us. We will give you some more information in the next couple of weeks. So have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Val.